Hi everyone. A few years back there was a caution in our chemistry books warning us never to attempt a reaction between potassium with water because the reaction is explosive. I always ignored this warning and for about 10 years now I have always reacted potassium with water because my students and I deserved to see this explosion. The only precaution that I used to take was using a small piece of potassium but every time we did this my student would always request or rather demand that I use a bigger piece of potassium. I have always ignored their requests until now because over the years I've come to realize that quite a good number of the students' requests are not illogical as we tend to perceive them as teachers, parents or guardians. And now, gentle ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time in a Kenyan high school laboratory or any other laboratory in this country, three grams of potassium in water. Come on, baya, baya. Before doing this experiment, we had to take six precautions because, to be honest, this is a very dangerous experiment. Number one is that we had to do the experiment outside the laboratory. Number two, I gave my students some tissue papers that they were first of all supposed to wipe themselves in case potassium hydroxide splashed on them before irrigating themselves with lots of running water. Number three, as the person who was to be closest to the reaction, I had to completely cover myself using a face mask, a cap, and most importantly, some glasses for my eyes. Number four, together with my students, we devised this gadget that would ensure that I was about a kilometer away from the reaction. This device was to ensure that we get a really good explosion by sinking potassium in water using a small mass. Number five, we had a fire extinguisher just in case there was a fire. Number six, and most importantly, the students had to stay and really meet us away. At the what? Stay and ready meet us away. We started our experiments using sodium and for sodium it is simple. It melts into a silvery ball, darts on the water surface, producing a fizzing sound. And like expected, my students requested that I put even a bigger piece of sodium in water. And this time round, I obliged. <laughs> <laughs> to make it even juicier, we made the sodium to explode by placing a piece of paper on the water, thus preventing it from darting or moving on the water surface. After catching fire, the boys would do the necessary. And finally, on to potassium. I was so cautious when holding potassium to the extent that I used two gloves. Of course, never ever hold potassium using bare hands. The moisture on your hands would react with it, burning you so badly. We started with a small piece of potassium, about 0.5 grams floating on water, which would produce a young one of an explosion. <laughs> But our aim this time around was to get the mother of all the explosions and therefore we had to sink the potassium in the water. We used a small mass to weigh it down and using our CBC device that was about 4 meters long, we sunk potassium in water and this is what followed. An unforgettable explosion and after the experiments we did a head count for all my students and all of them were safe all of them no injuries no nothing <laughs> but as usual in any school or any organization, there will always be that one student or that one person who does not follow instructions. His name is Newton Kariuki and he's seen he is campering for safety. One man down, tango one, tango two. One man down, tango one, tango two. Kariuki down, tango one, tango two.
In conclusion, I must admit that the explosion also shook me. I had expected the glass beaker to shatter and the mother of all the explosions. But what we go to was the great great grandmother of all explosions. We must have been too ambitious to start by sinking three grams of potassium. And therefore, my advice to anyone who would want to replicate this experiment, use about one gram of potassium. That is enough. And lastly, to our curriculum developers and the book publishers, the question that was there a few years back, which I'm glad that is no longer there in the newest editions, should be brought back. But this time around, it should be brought back in form of an advice. Advise the teachers to use a small piece of potassium, about 0.5 to 1 gram of potassium. And secondly, and most importantly, to never ever hold potassium using their bare hands. The fire extinguisher that we were using malfunctioned, releasing all the CO2 in there. Luckily, we were now able to see and get hold of the dry ice, the name given to solid CO2. It was scorching and held on bare hands. <laughs> An effect that I came to realize later is known as frostbite. Thank you so much. I'm out.